DC today. My name is Brian Seitel. It is Wednesday, August 16th, and it's good to be with you all today. Kind of a choppy session uh, in markets. We had an up market in the morning um, following sort of a give back last couple of days, but we were up, uh, up upwards of 150 points sort of mid-morning and got a slew full of different data points and markets just sort of seemed to sell off um, and trade lower from there. We closed down ultimately 180 points on the day, which was a swing of 360 points, um, you know, peak to, peak to trough. So basically closed right around the lows for the day. Um, there was some data out of China that moved markets. There was uh, minutes for the um, uh, the last meeting, the Federal Reserve meeting from July, were released today, and that moved markets a little bit around uh, 11 or so Eastern. And uh, and so we'll kind of go through this stuff here. But um, the 10-year uh, today closed at 426. We were in the morning trading at around 418. So you had a, a decent move in interest rates today. The yield curve, um, somewhat dramatically, relatively speaking, steepened a little bit on the day. Um, so, uh, so in other words, the short end of the curve was down just a little bit, long end of the curve was, was up a little bit. You got a little steeper yield, yield curve. We're still inverted by about 70 basis points though. Um, so less than 100, but still inverted. Um, China yesterday had some, some decently poor numbers that were released um, economically, and they cut interest rates. They cut interest rates by the most they have in three years which is all of 15 basis points, but, but still it's indicative of monetary policy that's trying to, to aid uh, a declining economic reality in the country. The, um, along with lower rates, uh, especially when the rest of the world is, is high in rates and or even increasing rates, you get a, a weakening currency there. So the, the uh, yuan to dollar ratio is at the highest it's been uh, in over a year at this point. So you're having a, a, a weakening effect on currency Economy there has you know poor numbers basically across the board. They're still kind of getting out of the fog of, of zero COVID really, and the, and the expansion just hasn't caught on um, as some would have would have thought it would. And then also there's been some supply chain movement around the world. All those things matter. Behaviors, policies, it, it's it's all affecting the economy there a bit. And you're you're starting to see uh, along with weakening currency and, and lowering interest rates. Um, you're starting to see some cracks in their financial system. The real estate market in China is dramatically lower and depreciating. It was overbuilt and over levered and with declining prices, you get issues. It's just like we went through issues in the financial crisis. Um, it isn't that there yet, but there are some, some canaries in coal mines potentially. There was a, uh, a fairly large investment slash shadow banking company uh, I might not say the name correctly, but it's Jing, Jingzhou, I, I believe it's, it's pronounced, um, that uh, missed some interest payments and some investment payments uh, today. And so th those are little signs. Um, you, you know, you've had an ongoing sort of credit watch and, and financial stress inside of the real estate lending division in the country, and, and all those things matter. All that to say, remember, it's still growing. You know, we still have positive GDP growth there. It's just less than it has been in a very long time. And, and so they're dealing with that. And again, central bank policy is, um, is changing and in, in, in acting. You, you may get some stimulus there at some point. It wouldn't surprise me at all. And um, depending on how, how bad it gets, but uh, I know David has a, a dividend cafe this Friday that'll got, kind of go through that in more depth. So I'll sort of leave it there. But um, so, you know, in the US, we had uh, some housing data. Uh, building starts today were, were better than expected, up 3.9%, I believe, month over month, which was, which was good. A lot of that was um, single family new starts. We're up 6.7% on the month. That was the biggest um, contributor to that. Uh, multifamily was sort of flat inside of there. So, so some decent numbers in the US. Um, you had the minutes released today from the Federal Reserve. Uh, their last meeting, and uh, obviously the, they raised a quarter point the last meeting, so we know what they did, and it was unanimous. But you know, most of those constituents were talking about inflation still being a factor, still being a risk, still being their main concern, and that further rate hikes are on the table. You know, it just depends on the data. Um, that markets didn't love that release today. You saw, you know, in, like I said, interest rates move up a little bit on that. And, uh, and then stocks sort of moved lower uh, following that. It wasn't a huge jar to markets, but, but just some more data on how the Fed's thinking. That all said, remember we've had a CPI print after their last meeting. And so the futures didn't move a ton. The 
we're still at like a 90% probability that they're going to hold rates the same in September. Um, did move up a little bit farther out. So for uh, November and December, we're something like uh, 65, 35, two thirds, one third that they'll hold uh, or they'll go ahead and raise. The, the Ask Brian section was pretty simple. It was really just, I get a lot of questions about people's cash holdings and banks and things and why the interest rates are low and, and why money markets that are elsewhere with, that we might have are over 5% and, and people are curious about how that could be. Um, and I kind of go through it. But I thought it was a, a neat segue into some of the stuff I'm talking about with the different monetary policy happening in different economies. So if you look at the U.S., obviously we've risen rates you know, dramatically here to slow inflation and we're at 5.5%. Dollar has been very strong because of that. Rising rates, currency tends to go just like our clients and our own bank deposits go to where interest is. Money flows around the world to where it gets rewarded and it gets rewarded with higher rates. And so when you have countries like Japan with zero rates or very low rates or countries like China where that are in the process of decreasing rates, you do get capital that tends to move out of those countries. And so you get a depreciating currency effect and that has, that has um, ramifications on exports. And uh, w- one of the ways we can see that recently is, is that yesterday, Japan had a 6% quarter over quarter GDP growth, which is far ahead of expectations. And it was largely fueled by exports. And one of the reasons is, part of it is that, you know, supply chain things and, and global demand and all those things, of course. But, um, you know, the yen has just been dramatically weak against a lot of the rest of the currencies around the world because they really didn't increase rates. You know, they didn't have an inflation issue to speak of. They had some inflation, but not anything that was runaway. And so they kept rates uh, at zero and and currency was weak. They exported more widgets and all those things across the world, call them Sony's and Toyota's and so forth. And now we're sort of seeing that in the numbers. And I say that because you are seeing a weakening yuan in China. And at some point, I do suspect that'll help with some of their exports. and so we'll, we'll kind of see how, how that plays out. But yeah, I think in the, in the beginning, I, I said what happens when, when, uh, uh, when the, you know, when, when all these, when you get diverging uh, economic outcomes in, in the first, the second, and the third largest country in the world. And I would say that uh, you get divergent monetary policy. And again, I think David will have some more on it on Friday in Dividend Cafe. You get divergent um, uh, relative currencies. Yeah, and because of that, you get divergent um, you know, central, you know, account balances between countries, net, net imports and exports. And so all those things end up getting tied together. Um, and it's just sort of around and around we go with the pendulum swinging, uh, t- you know, back and forth in, in, in different business cycles between countries and economies. Um, so all that to say, uh, yeah, choppy day, uh, negative more or less on, on the day in, in markets, but um, sort of getting through it. I appreciate your time and listening as always and uh, reach out with uh, any questions and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Mm-hmm.